everybody, welcome back to Train World TV. Today we're diving into the very first video in the instructional series, how to build a layout right here on Train World TV. We're going to talk about bench work today, so let's get started. Now, as you can see, there is bench work behind me. Bench work is simply the foundation of your layout so you can run your model trains. This could be something as simple as a table or as complex as a series of tables. There are so many different ways to do bench work. There's only one approach I can take to this video to kind of cover how it's done. So with that said, we're gonna look a little closer at the woodworking here to see what exactly is done to make a layout happen. So you may have heard of what's called modular layouts. These are layouts you see often at your train show and they're consisting of usually two foot by four foot tables constructed specifically to have a nice smooth surface to run trains. And occasionally, if you want terrain, they will drop a module down. What this layout is in my basement is a mixture of shelf layout where that's installed up against the wall, modular layout, and just permanent layout structure. There are so many different ways to do a layout. I'm gonna cover some of the basic things you need to know in order to perform woodworking well and get the layout up and running. Now what you're looking at here is some old bench work on my previous layout. This is a two foot by four foot module. Now you wanna put a plywood top like you see here on this table preferably a half an inch thick. Some people want to save weight or cost and do a quarter inch thick, but there are some susceptibilities when you do that. So my suggestion and my preference was to do a half inch sheet of plywood on top. As for the skeleton or the structure of the module, you're going to want to get some nice pine. That's my suggestion, some nice quality pine. They have a uh, called select pine at certain retailers, but it's a level up. You're going to get a nice straight piece of wood most times with that. And you're going to do one by fours, and you're going to construct this to where there's at least a couple braces in between the two foot by four foot module. You're also going to want to use number six or number eight general construction screws with the length no less than double the thickness of the frame lumber. That's my suggestion there. And the longer the screws, um, the better in, in a lot of cases, such as about two inch, two and a quarter inch, I mean two and a half inch or even three inches are better. And I'll show you how these are screwed in here. So you've got each support and each end, there's screws holding that in. So you have a nice good foundation and what you don't want and you can actually see here as a bad example is a wobble you know you've got some twisting and that can really cause some problems there are so many domino effects to building a layout especially with the bench work it's so key it's like a it's like a foundation to a house but once you get the bench work done and you start on track work it can really cause track work problems if you don't have this nice and level and my suggestion is if you don't want a flat layout, a lot of people don't, then you're going to want to subset different modules lower than others and form that terrain. And we'll get into that later in the video. Another good point for the bench work is you want to go ahead and pre-drill holes. You see two holes here. This helps with your bus wiring. And we'll talk about bus wiring in a later video, talking about how you deliver power and DCC commands to your entire layout. So this is gonna get more and more complex. So that is the basic type of bench work there, a four foot by, a two foot by four foot module. Again, you see those a lot in train shows and I'll just give you a view of this from the side. And as you can see on my layout, there's your half inch plywood and your frame. And I did four foot by four foot posts because we have a hybrid layout. It's not just modular, it's also fastened to the wall in areas. So it can be a shelf layout in areas. We have drop bridges. There's so many different ways 
to go about it. And I've kind of taken a mixed approach. Why did I do four foot by four foot posts? Although pricey, they are a good option for more stability. I wanted absolute stability on this layout. And anywhere you take a level on this layout, that bubble is going to be in the middle. Now, if at all possible, you want that bu bubble dead center because over time, if it's even shifted slightly, you can create a grade. And we ran across that here in the construction of this layout. As you can see here, this will be the bridge area and you have a dropped area. That's how I think it's best to approach this so that you don't have so many issues with track because HO scale is so finicky all it takes is one truck of one locomotive to lift off the track and you can have a derailment. Here's another example as you are not going to always have square layout frames you're going to want to make curves and maybe go off on a peninsula you can see this here where it's a frame that starts a little thinner and gets a little wider to meet up with the two foot by four foot posts. So you can do all of that. Teaching woodworking is a skill I can't do very well and I don't want to uh, say much about that, but I'm giving you a foundation on bench work. Now what I was talking about with these trucks on locomotives is as you can see, this one doesn't have as much play, but there's some play in these trucks. And a good locomotive will be able to navigate some pretty difficult curves and track irregular irregularities. But what you don't want is the track to suddenly dip or to go up where there's a dip at the beginning where it's starting to go up and that truck starts to float and that's what causes a lot of derailments. That is why the layout and the bench work is so critical. Now, let's say you don't want to create different heights of the table. You don't aren't sure what you want to do with different terrain. There are tools you can use to help. There is a woodland scenic risers you can get. I'll show you that basically on screen so you can see what those are. That it helps you elevate the track. You can also work terrain up around the track and we'll get to that in the scenery video. But there's just so many different options. And if you're saying to yourself, boy, that you know wood's really expensive, it's gonna cost a fortune, there's what's called an open grid layout as well. And the open grid layout plan, I'll show you an example or two, but over here, it's just like this. But there are ripped pieces of plywood that go across where the track's gonna be, and the rest of it's kind of formed in with all these different scenery objects or newspaper or chicken wire to make the terrain around it and really save yourself some money on wood and weight. Now that's more advanced in my opinion for layout building. It's also more advanced for carpentry so I don't mess with that. I just go ahead and make the whole tables and then I build the terrain around them. One of the key reasons it's so important to have good bench work is because there's so many different fastening options. There's shelf layouts. This is actually attached to the studs on this part of the layout. And then you're gonna have cork roadbed that you're gonna put down, or some people will put foam down, and it makes it really, really hard with these materials to make an even layout without having this just perfect. As you can see here, the cork roadbed is just slightly rising and it's probably due to a screw under here, not countersunk. Now countersinking screws is important as well. There's some tools for that. You don't want screws sitting up too much, especially where track is going to be or track roadbed is going to be. Not as big of a deal in the scenery areas because you can go over it with any sort of uh, product from Woodland Scenics. There's different items you can use to kind of cover that screw head up, no big deal. But if you're running in the track area, you want to make sure it's countersunk. And that just means that when I run my finger over here, I'm not feeling a bump on the screw. I know track planning is another video in this series, but sometimes it's important to track plan before you do the layout because you'll need to know where you're putting things like a turntable or a roundhouse. This is going to be where the turntable is and the roundhouse, so that had to be measured out with the track plan to have the right location to cut this out 
of the bench work. You also want it surrounded by that support uh, wood under the frame, making sure there's no dips in this area as well. Now I talked about the legs here, and a lot of people will not want to be doing 4x4 four four posts. So my suggestion would be 1x6 L-shaped, so you have a 1x6 going here and a 1x6 going here, and then connected to the frame with carriage bolts rather than screws will give it a more stable um, fit and it'll keep that layout from moving because you don't want to bump into your table depending on how much space you have and possibly disconnect tracks, shift the table to where there's going to be derailment problems. Speaking of bolts, you would think that these two holes here at the end of the module were for wiring and they really should have been or there should have been another set. But these two holes were actually for bolts to bolt together this module to another module in my last layout. And what that does is again increase stability. That's what you want to do as much as possible to have a really stable foundation. Those layouts at model train shows you can get a lot of knowledge from them and learn how they do it. Um, they aren't always stable. They keep a distance away so people aren't right up against them a lot of times. But you can learn a lot of tricks just by talking to those modular guys at the different train shows once they resume after this COVID mess. Now one thing we're going to talk about a lot later, basically wrapping up the series, is fascia. But it's important to know about now. And the reason it's important to know about is you want your plywood up against this out for outward frame as much as possible because you're going to be attaching fascia to it. You don't want a whole lot of gaps. There's going to be human error. There's going to be a little gap here or there, but it's best to put that as close to the edge as possible so that you can connect your fascia at the end. And fascia, by the way, is just some really thin wood over here. Um, I've got some already cut. The black stuff right there uh, from my previous layout. It's flexible. So you can literally take it around the layout and you can bend it around. As you can see here, this is a fascia connection point. So we can bend it around this circular area. Probably a little better to see it as I zoom out. But you can just bend the fascia around, paint it, and it makes a nice finished look to your layout. And that's why it's going to be so much later in the series, but it's important to know about now. Okay, there's always stuff we don't cover. I'm going to try to remember all of it, but I'm going to give you a couple tips first. The first one is get you one of these. It's just a temperature and humidity reader. You want to check before you're building your layout to make sure that the area you're building in, if at all possible, has a low swing in humidity. As you can see here, there's a 2% swing in humidity in this room, and that's actually over the course of months where we've had highs near 100 and lows in the 40s and 50s. So that's pretty good, and it just changed to three because I'm holding it and probably emitting some humidity. Also, temperature on here is only a one degree difference in between all that, which is pretty amazing considering there's a garage door on one end of this layout. And I've actually put this down on that end so that you can, so I can see what the temperature is and it has not changed much. But as I hold this, because I'm a little warm and I emit humidity, you can see that it's going up. And even my breath, will change it when you're that close, but it has been sitting, as you saw at the beginning, with a very low humidity difference. Now that's going to be more important on track than bench work, but bench work is susceptible to humidity too, and you'd be surprised what kind of problems can be caused, so try your best to have a stable environment. If you don't have a stable environment, that's okay, because there's ways to mitigate that. And I'm going to show you one of those over here. The reason my humidity is low is I have a dehumidifier hooked up to a tube that goes directly out with the furnace water. So that dehumidifier is keeping this humidity in check. Without it, it was swinging a lot more. This says it's good for 1,500 square feet. The room is about 1,500 square feet. I could probably go for two. I may add one down to this end of the layout later and just empty it by hand, but this is a really lazy option and it's great because it automatically empties all the water and there's no emptying the tank. So a dehumidifier just collects that extra moisture in the air, turns it into water, which is pretty much distilled water, 
and then you can dump it out from the bucket or hook up the hose like I showed you there. This area you can see has had some high humidity in the past and one of the indicators of that is there's some bubbling on the brick here. So, or not really brick, but foundation. So there's bubbling there and you can tell this has a humidity area and you can also get a humidity reader that you put right up against that wall to test. So cinder block foundation has some humidity in it. Now one other tip I want to leave you with is consider installing your lighting before you do your layout because once you start your layout, unless you just want to walk all over the bench work and install the lighting, you're going to want to have your lighting together before the bench work. You want even lighting, nice areas of lighting. There may be some variations, but you don't want many. Well, hopefully this video has you ready to tackle bench work, but don't be too upset if you still don't have your head wrapped around it. There's a lot to learn over years of experience from carpentry skills to model railroading specific bench work skills. And if you don't quite have a grasp, I suggest checking out some literature from different model railroad magazines. There's several out there. You can check out that literature. It'll give you step-by-step -step guidelines to building your bench work. And if that still doesn't appease you or you don't have enough information, perhaps you can talk down in the comments about what your best experience is for building bench work, best approaches, and we can learn from each other in the comments section. No one model railroader has all the knowledge and there's so many different approaches, so it's interesting to see what's out there. Well, I hope you learned something today and we'll be back with an all new video coming soon in this How to Build a Layout series here on Train World TV. Again, I'm James Wright, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.